Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead friends. Behind us are our brand new EG4 6000 XP inverters. Today we're gonna talk about three different things. We're gonna talk about how to update your version one EG4 LL batteries to talk to the inverters. We're gonna talk about how to set up the Wi-Fi dongles on these inverters so that you can use them with your home Wi-Fi to talk to your computer and your phone. We're gonna to try to answer a few questions that I've had already about the programming for these. And then we're gonna take a look at the computer interface and show you what you can do in it. Let's get going. So if you're like me and you have the version one LL batteries, you're going to need a few different things that you need to obtain from either Signature Solar or EG4 or your distributor to be able to get these batteries to communicate with the new 6000 XPs. The first thing you're gonna need is this special cable. The cable has a USB on one side to a serial connection, and that serial connection is then married to another one, which is on this ethernet cable, and it's not a full pinout. I'm not even exactly sure what it is. It might be a 2468 pinout. I can't really see them all. To update that version one LLs, you're going to need to get this file from EG4 or Signature Solar. This is the V1 LuxPower file. Within it, you've got this PIC Updater 9600. This is what you're going to use to update the firmware on your version one LL batteries. You're going to need at least a Windows 10 computer to do this. You're gonna to need to plug the USB into one of the USB ports on your computer and then plug in this portion to the RS-485 port on your battery. And that will be the same port that you use for communications with your 6000 XP. When you're doing this, you're gonna to want to turn off your breaker and turn off your BMS. Disconnect your battery from any bus bars. So you'll disconnect both your positive and negative power cables. Once you've done that, set your dip switches to all down, connect that new cable to your RS-485 port, and then turn on your BMS. From there, you'll click on import hex and you will find that file within the files that they sent you. You'll find the correct COM port for where you plugged it in on your computer. Open COM port. You shouldn't have to mess with the baud rate. The baud rate should be 9600 and then this will populate and you can hit start update. Mine took roughly a minute and a half to update the battery. Now initially the information that I got is that I just had to update the master battery that is communicating with the 6000 XP and that's what I did and it works perfectly. Since that time EG4 has stated that you should firmware update all your version 1 LLs but Mine's working fine with just the master updated. If you have lithium iron phosphate batteries and you do not want to set up those communications, you can set it up like I did originally in my first video. And that is setting everything to lead acid, even though you have lithium batteries, and then typing in the full number of amp hours your entire battery bank has. So mine would be 900 and that's what I entered in. There is another workaround that one of my subscribers mentioned to me. I haven't personally tried it, but he mentioned that you could set the battery brand to Lux Power, and that is either code one or six instead of zero for the EG4 batteries. And you will need all the dip switches down, which is the zero address, on your master battery. So if you wanna to try to set it up that way, you can. Now as a quick point of reference, if I didn't mention it earlier, when you are updating your master battery with your computer, updating the firmware, you need to have the dip switches in the all down position, which is address zero. Once you are done with that and you're ready to communicate with your 6000 XP, you'll switch it back to address one, which is down, 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 up. The up switch is on the right side. Now to keep your warranty intact for your EG4 batteries, in setting 12 on the inverters, you're going to want to set the cutoff at 20%. The default is set at 15, so bump that up a little bit. Setting 19 is interesting. This is the off-grid PV enable and disable. 
the default is enabled and you want to disable that because for most of us we are going to have batteries or a generator or even AC in connected to this so we don't want to run strictly off PV. Now like some of the other inverters you were able to set the priority of power sources for these and on my 6500EXs I had it set for SBU or solar battery utility in that order. And since I didn't have AC in, the U or the utility was never used. So it was solar first, then battery. As far as I've been able to ascertain, these 6000 XPs do that automatically. They will sense which power source has the most potential and it will use that power source first before switching to the second one. And in the manual in chapter six, under 6.1 common settings, you should be able to change that to normal or standby. Now, I wish I could do that, but within the phone application and the computer application, I am not able to enter installer settings. So I'm gonna have to talk to Signature Solar or EG4 to see if I can get into this option. The only thing I'm able to manipulate in both is chapter five, end user settings. All of the other settings that are contained within chapter six that I can manipulate, I have to do it on the inverter, which is fine by me. But if this is available to me, I wanna be able to use it. And I may do a future community post on whether I'm able to get into these and how I was able to get into them, if at all. You can see I have the Wi-Fi dongle enabled on both of these. I was a little skeptical at first, and if some of you are not comfortable with setting up the Wi-Fi to these, then there are two other options for you. EG4 offers a cellular enabled option for this. It's a little bit different. It plugs into the same port here on the side and you get a SIM card with it. I believe you get two years free service for that SIM card through your local um, cell phone provider, whomever that is. And after that, then, I don't know, you pr maybe it's five bucks a month. I'm not exactly sure. Also, I believe there is an ethernet cable option for this. Instead of sending it out over Wi-Fi, you can physically plug in the ethernet cable for communications with your computer. Head on over to Signature Solar or EG4 and they'll help you sort that out if Wi-Fi isn't your thing. And you can click on the links below the video for any of the equipment that we have here in our videos. So first things first, you need to connect your Wi-Fi dongle to your inverter. And on the side of the inverter, it has this little box and you connect it through the bottom. Well, as you can see, this one is taken off for a reason and let me explain that. And that's because in some of these models, this is off slightly. The position of where the connection is inside the housing, the Wi-Fi dongle itself will not seat properly to it. So as you can see, this one is off, but this one is on and the dongle seated perfectly. So if you're having trouble and you're not getting any green lights on your dongle, try taking that housing off and plugging it in that way. Now let's jump into this monitoring software and it's a little bit different on mobile than it is on the computer. So down here on the mobile at the bottom, there are four icons. On this side, you can see setting. On the web version of this, this one over here, setting is called maintenance. And it also has five icons you can manipulate instead of just four. I hope you can see this all right. I'm not really a techie guy. So the initial thing you're gonna do is register. Obviously this is on the phone app. You're gonna come in here and fill out your information under plant name. That's gonna be different than what it's gonna be on the computer. It's gonna be called station name on the computer. And all it is is your nickname for your house station. Down here, you'll see customer code. And depending on where you buy it from, that is go gonna be what you're gonna put in there. So for Signature Solar, if you do buy it from them, it's going to be just the word signature. And that's the same on the computer. And then interesting enough, they use Greenwich Mean Time on the time zone. So you're gonna have to find the Greenwich Mean Time for your area. For us here in the central United States, it's GMT minus six hours. So GMT minus six. There's maps and charts online that you can find easily to find that proper number 
for where you live. So when you initially plug in the Wi-Fi dongle, you should get one light on it, the bottom light, which turns green, and that tells you it's connected and has power. From there, you can go on either your mobile device or your computer and look for, under the Wi-Fi settings, the address, serial number, of your Wi-Fi dongle. Now that is written on the side of the dongle and is also written on the side of the box that it comes in. So don't lose these boxes just in case that sticker gets damaged. The fan just turned off so the sun must have gone down far enough where we aren't getting enough PV in for it to need those fans. Once you've registered, connected your dongle, made sure it has power, gone to your Wi-Fi settings, found the address for the dongle, you're going to hit dongle connect. That will get that dongle transmitting its Wi-Fi signal. From there, you need to go back to your house Wi-Fi. Once you do that, your dongle Wi-Fi will start talking with your house Wi-Fi, and then you'll be able to see it on your phone once you log in. And this works that way with the computer as well. Now for as many dongles as you have, you will have to register and connect each one of them that way. For recording purposes, I don't have anything running right now, and you can see I don't have any PVN or I'd have a little arrow, moving arrow this way, and my batteries are 100% full. So if it was charging the batteries, you'd have an arrow going this way, and down for powering my loads in my house, that is where the arrow would move down in this direction. And if I had grid, which is over here on the right side, that would be connected that way. You can see power consumption at this time is zero. You can see that maintenance tab right there, and you can come in here and set per your inverter, and you will have to click this read button up here. You'll have to find the serial number of each inverter that you have and click the read button right next to it, and then it will bring up the settings for your particular inverter, however you have those set. So you can see on the bottom right side here, I've got the uh, state of charge discharge and cutoff at 20%. There's some AC charging settings here. I don't have that enabled, so I don't also have the generator enabled, so there's nothing I can change there. We don't have lead acid, so that is actually not applicable either. And I do have the voltage set at 240, 120, and the frequency at 60. And like I said, I don't have access to any of the installer settings in this area. These are only the end user settings. You can get the data from each inverter about how it's charging, your state of charge of your batteries, the output. There's a lot of different things here. Any event history, if you've got a problem, you can graph pretty much anything. You can see my kilowatt um, usage here. If you go to configuration, you can configure the dongles. And from here on management, you can refresh your inverter, do whatever you need. Under configuration, under stations, you can either add a station if you want to do that. That's no big deal. I just have one. And over here, you can add your second dongle. So this is the easy way to add a dongle and get that second one communicating or third one communicating with your house system. So you'll click on that. Under overview, device overview, you can see what each inverter has done the battery discharge and the solar yield. And this will start to populate the more and more and more I use it. And then if you want to switch between your inverters, however many they ha you have, you can just do it under this drop down right there and it'll switch between your inverters. And then at the bottom, you can see these nice graphs. It's got your solar production. It's been really rainy and cloudy the last couple days that I've had it connected. And just today, I just booted it up to uh, run it for this video and then I will be doing some load tests coming up here soon. And you can see how all that plays out on your graphs as well. And you can go back here on the different days and you can see what time of day everything was working and what the production was and what the specific data shows. Now I did find that everything populated initially when connecting the dongles it populated on my computer quicker than it did my cell phone. And I did wanna mention, you may need to log out and log back in with your password to get everything connected together properly and talking to one another. And obviously everything's working fine and everything's connected. It took maybe an hour, give or take, to get everything set up and connected properly. 
But again, I'm not a really techy guy, so it could take you five minutes. Plus, I had to get things like this dongle not seating properly taken care of, so that adds to the time of the process. I hope those little tips and tricks help you out, and if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comment section below. And if you haven't seen my video on the initial installation of this, please click on the link at the top of the screen. And as always, if you're interested in any of the equipment, click on the link in the video description or on the pinned comment below the video. All in all, this system is pretty easy to get set up and programmed, even for someone who's not very tech oriented like I am. Now go click on this video right here, which talks about the cost of every part and piece in our initial system for our homestead. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.